These guys can be broken down off the dribble. These guys can be locked up as well. I think sometimes teams and players show each other too much respect. You got to come out there and show how important this game is for the Gold Coast plays. And they get first crack at it. De Leon goes up for the miss, and Damian Martin pulls down the board. Here come Perth. You can look at the pace of this one already. Redditch. Great matchup between him and Mark Worthington. Knight with Petrie. Petrie yeah. gets the stop. See, I like that from the Perth Wildcats. They looked around. They tried to get the easy basket. It wasn't there. They got it out. They got it into the post. They got a good shot. Gibson. De Leon for a long three is off the mark. Worthington with the offensive rebound and put back, but he misses the sitter. Come on, we got this one. Lynch. Gibson's all over him. Redditch misses out the floor. Extra pass goes to Cam Toby from the corner. A little bit short. Stephen Hoare rips it down. The Gold Coast plays. Defensive transition has been good in the first two possessions. Didn't give up anything easy for the Perth Wildcats. Worthington gets it back from De Leon. Nice flash to the high post from Petrie. It's kept alive by Matthew Knight. Throws it right to Adam Gibson. Lynch gets the loose ball. Caught a break there. Not supposed to save it underneath the opponent's basket. We're talking about a high-scoring game, Steve. At the moment, I'm not sure what's going on. Eventually, Cam Toby is a left-hand runner and gets our scoring underway in this ball game after a minute and a half of play. The Perth Wildcats going into their 2-3 defense, their zone defense again. Petrie on a good closeout by Lish. Wild shot brought down by Matthew Knight. And I like this call from... Uh, got Beveridge going into this zone with Harvey out of the lineup, their best three-point shooter out. They're really challenging the Gold Coast to be able to hit those from the perimeter. What a pass from Sean Redditch as he was knocked off balance. Gets it to Matthew Knight and the Wildcats up four. And this was a problem for the Gold Coast last week against New Zealand. They got out-rebounded by 22 rebounds. And I know it's something they've worked on during the week, but not a good start with Redditch on the offensive boards on that occasion. Yeah. De Leon trying to get into the gap of that zone. And I, you know, Wollongong did that against Adelaide last night. Just came out in a zone. You know, and sometimes teams aren't ready for that. And it can really slow you down and bog you down and not get a good start. Worthington for three. Comes up short. It's tipped to De Leon. He comes up with a layup. Another miss. Four missed layups for the Perth. I'm sorry, for the Gold Coast Blades. Oh, my. I mean, this is a guy that is a big scorer in De Leon, but he's five for 22 in the last TV game, Steve. He's obviously playing some mental little games with himself. Oh, man, when those don't roll in, it doesn't help. Mark Worthington puts it on the floor. Nice bounce pass to Stephen Hoare, and that was pressure, but still it was another layup missed. Toby with another floater. Cam Toby and the Perth Wildcats score the first six points. And the Gold Coast Blaze have gone over three minutes without a score. That is a tough shot from Cam Toby. Made it look very easy, but you're going to have really good touch. De Leon has one bounce out. Mark Worthington with the foot back, and he's fouled and will go to the line. That's one thing that is always a struggle when you're playing a zone defense is you don't necessarily have one person that you're responsible to block out. And the offensive boards, you see Mark Worthington that time really crash it hard and get rewarded and now go to the line for the three-point play. A little bit, little bit soft, the roll-up. Well, De Leon has not been bashful. Zero for four in the first three minutes, 15. Well, he's not the only one that comes out. Not talking about... Drew Williamson coming off the bench for the Perth Wildcats. And when you asked me what I thought his shooting percentage was, with the attitude he has when he comes in, I thought it was a lot better than what it is. Well, he's shooting 24% from the three, Steve, but he will come in with that mindset that he's a scorer and he's got to make his shots. And like he's shooting at 60%. Well, like, you, like you say, Shane, he must feel like that's his job. Come out there and shoot those. Martin throws it out of bounds looking for Matt Knight. 
And Martin's been out for a little while. It's going to take him a little bit to get his touch back and all the rest of it. But the thing that he does, and you try and tell kids, you don't have to score 20 points to be the best player on the team. This guy passes the ball, he rebounds, he blocks shots, plays deep like no one else in the league. Nice pass. Throws a dart to Mark Worthington, and he finishes the job off with a three. And just like that, a three-point play and a three-point basket for Mark Worthington, and we're tied up at six. Now the Blaze going into their own full-court pressure defense to try and mix things up. Good tactic from Joey Wright. I like that, too. Often a team that presses, teams are reluctant to press them because of the tempo. Lish, after the Blaze have scored the last six, Sean Reddit from the three-point line comes up short. It'll stay with the Perth Wildcats. And the Blaze have done a good job to keep it out of Kevin Lish's hands at the moment. Not getting a shot up, and he's their leading scorer with over 17 points a game. Martin launches the three, and he didn't hit many of those in warm-ups as his team was warming up, shooting layups, dunks, and three-point shots. He didn't hit many, but he hits his first attempt to give the Wildcats a three-point lead. Well, he's never been known as a three-point shooter, Steve, for his whole career. And then two years ago, he shot the ball at almost 50%. You're like, where did this come from? And uh, he hasn't been able to carry it on so much this year as we see Gibson, who again isn't known as a big-time three-point shooter, but he shot it well on that occasion. Sure did. Drills down Cam Toby. That's his shot too, but he comes up short. Lish. Perth is not shy. They will jack that thing up even after a couple of missed attempts. Knight goes in like a bull. He's fouled, draws the contact and goes to the line. And now that he got a little bit of a break, these guys going to the foul line, Matthew Knight is. How about, let's talk with the Australian team, with Adam Gibson and Damian Martin, probably going for that same position, you think? Oh, without doubt, Steve. I think only one of these two guys are going to make the team. And it'll be a very, very tough decision for Brett Brown and, and his assistant coaches because both players play a similar type of game. Both great defenders can play a backup position uh, and very good teammates as well. If you're thinking here in Australia, who are the other guards that could possibly go? I think everyone forgets about Matt Delavadova. Oh, Delavadova, he is really impressed and uh, he will be playing at the Olympic Games. Don't worry about that. When you start looking at Ingles and Yuli and these guys, Gibson wants to be able to stamp his name on the game. As we're talking about the Australian team, he'll want to send this game to Brett Brown so far. But uh, obviously with Paddy Mills at the point guard spot, and you see a little bit of argy bargy. I don't know about you, Steve, but I like a little bit of that. <laughs> it always seems to liven the game up, and there's always a team that gets fired up from an incident like that. And there's a bit of history between Mark Worthington and Sean Redditch. They have spoken a little bit of trash in the past and been able to back it up on court. Well, Stephen Hoare and Matthew Knight getting into it a little bit on that one. You don't see Stephen Hoare getting into it too much, but we're all tied up. We said we had a high-scoring game. We said it was going to be close. Well, it's close. Just under five minutes to go here in the first. We'll be back from the Gold Coast right after this. Hungry Jack's introduces premium choices. To show you how tasty they are, we've added extreme close-ups of our avocado. Shot our Swiss cheese in slow motion and added tricky rim lighting to our zesty tomato relish. Now I'm going to introduce them with my deep, rich voice. Meet the Swiss Avocado Chicken Tender Crisp and the Cheddar Swiss Chicken Tender Crisp. Part of our new Better Tastes menu. Hungry Jack's makes it better. Shot so we know where we're at. All right, do a better job of close up. If they're in, in zone, we're running dive. I want to run it this side, though. Run it this side. Run it to the other side. So we get Lish diving down versus Martin diving down on that, OK? If they're in man, go to 14 first play. If they're in man, go to 14, OK? 
Just fine tuning what he believes they need to do. He's happy with the Blazers' effort on the offensive glass. And that's that's so key. I mean, you talk about the elite teams, you talk about the Perth Wildcats and the New Zealand Breakers, who are clearly the best two teams in the competition right now. They can destroy a team on the glass. Well, Perth have their defense, of course, and New Zealand can just hammer you on the glass. And that's exactly what they did to the Gold Coast Blaze. I said by more than 20. Of, uh, rebounds, 26 rebounds they they got the blaze by last week. Very often. That's a lot of rebounds. Lish. Yeah, he drills that one. He'd want to do that. He had Sean Reddit wide open. And he's the leading scorer on the team. And it doesn't take him long to run a few in a row. And you just can't let a guy like Kevin Lish get his feet set. I mean, you have to run him off the line and make him into a penetrator. He should not get an open shot. Will Hudson bobbled it, and that's all Perth needs. Higher is in for the Perth Wildcats. We've spoken about this youngster getting an opportunity to get more minutes while Damian Martin was out, and he impressed, so he continues to get time on the floor. And we see Wagstaff coming into the lineup as well for Sean Reddick. I like Wagstaff's game. Just another hard-nosed guy that knows how to play his role. Does all the little things to be able to make his team better. And if he was playing on a less talented team, he would be playing a whole lot more minutes and, and bigger contributions in the numbers. Petrie had to rush one. There was only three seconds left on the shot clock. Mark, he's exploring. Kisses one off the glass. Good drive as he drew the body contact with Mark Worthington. All of a sudden, a five-point run for the Perth Wildcats, and that's exactly what they do. Defensive rebound and run. Good defense from Damian Martin forces De Leon to pull the trigger quick with pressure. Wagstaff gets his feet set. That's short. Mark Worthington with the rebound. That's good offense again. Now they, again, they get, it, they get a rebound, they throw it up the sideline, and all their bigs have the mobility to be able to run the middle line. Nice block by Matthew Knight. Lish getting through a small gap. He's a tough cover. Half cover, especially uh, going to his right hand there. Gibson did a good job anticipating that he was going to go to his favorite left. And to show the, the poise and ability to be able to sneak by super defenders. Luke Neville into the game as well as Brad Robbins. So higher actually getting some early minutes here as he goes down on the block. Kicks it to Lish for another good look outside the three-point line. A little strong. Gibson with the long rebound. He's been hot from the perimeter, and he just misses that one. Neville tips it, keeps it alive for his teammates. Higher. Spins. Maybe not a great one. Kadi comes up with the board. Golding to Worthington for three. the Gold Coast Blaze to be able to knock those shots down. The, the danger for them is if they take a quick shot in transition, Perth is so good about running it back the other end, so you really need to be able to knock down those threes. It is kind of rolling the dice with Perth. You know, the te up tempo may be to your advantage, but man, just like you said, they can turn it to a disadvantage in a hurry. Brad Robbins in the lineup the last couple of minutes. Didn't he do a good job of filling that gap while Martin was out? He played like a starter. He played starter minutes. Played the hard defense that Martin did, but was still able to put points on the board and play as well in that department as well. George did, did a great job of taking man drills a three here. We're gonna. I was gonna mention how he did a great job of taking slider players down on the block and creating free throws for himself as well. Well, he's, he's averaging 10 points a game at 47% uh, and three assists, so great leadership role that he was able to fill as we see Gibson continue with his momentum that he started this first quarter with. Adam Gibson with seven points already on the board here in the first. Boy, the plays look good when he's aggressive offensively. Higher in the lane for a long time. Three-point 
pump fakes a pass. It must be a tactic that they're trying to take Chris Golding to the post because Iris got the ball three times in the block on Golding in a couple of minutes. You're right though, Steve. I mean, they seem like they're in the, the paint forever. Well, he was posting up there, caught the ball, pumped fake twice, pivot, gave up the pass, didn't leave the lane when the shot was being attempted. It'd be frustrating when you're trying to guard that guy with the ball. Exactly. Robbins takes the lead out to five for the Wildcats. Hudson can't handle it. Higher has it knocked away by Jason Kadee. That is a great play from Jason Kadee. Really saved two points. Higher asking the question, but it didn't look like it was a foul from here. Just a terrific effort play. <laughs> Worthington not missing an opportunity to for a little physicality. This is Robbins. Golding with the board in traffic, gets it to Gibson. Good day by Kadee against the bigger and stronger Brad Robbins in the block. Gibson again with the drive, finds Jason Kadee wide open at the three-point line, misses the opportunity. Big Luke Neville pulls down the board to Robbins. Robbins up top, finds higher. Miscommunication on the D. It was a great pass fake by Brad Robbins. Faked it to, to Wagstaff where we all thought the ball was going to be able to go and then hit the hit higher for a backdoor play. Gibson again with the strong dribble penetration. He has made a night of it here at the early stages, getting into the paint of the first Wildcats defense. Well, the only two scorers we got for the Gold Coast Blazers are nine points with Mark Worthington, who takes a seat right now, and seven points for Gibson. And there are your Ooh. shooting stats. Blaze, uh, the exact opposite, very cold at 26%. Started off that way, Steve, and really just haven't been able to claw their way back the latter stages of this first quarter. And the two-man assault continues as Adam Gibson checks out. I love Gibbo playing with this mindset. I mean, his shot looks good, but he's been aggressive to the basket. He's opened up some opportunities for teammates that haven't necessarily knocked down the shot. But his mindset's aggressive, positive, proactive. First beat the pressure, they throw it up high to Luke Neville. He goes up for the jam over Petrie. Great pass from higher. Made a little touch pass look easy, and Neville did the rest. It's easy when you're seven foot to be able to do that, Steve. Yeah, that's what we all say. All the short guys say that. But you want to see him go up and finish <laughs> like that. Finish like a man, big fella. Yeah, exactly. No layups, no layup rule. Kadee has it go off his foot. And out of bounds, Joey Wright wants the foul. See what sort of play the Perth Wildcats can get in 3.6 seconds. Robbins trying to get to the rim. Gets all the way there, but can't get the up and under finger roll, but it is the...